Welcome to my recap of Christopher Nolan's Tenet. In this video, I not only recount the events of the film, but have simplified them too. So if you had any trouble following the movie, hopefully this recap will help you out. With that, get in your turnstile, reverse your entropy, and enjoy the recap. At an opera house in Ukraine, a group of CIA agents attempt to rescue an informant, along with the plutonium he acquired. Other groups recklessly go after the plutonium as well, putting innocent bystanders in danger, until one of the agents, the protagonist, protects them. In doing so, he is nearly killed, but is saved by a stranger. The protagonist notices a talisman on his savior's backpack, a coin on a string. Although the protagonist survives the mission, he is captured by the enemy and tortured, until he bites down on a CIA-issued suicide pill. Waking up on a boat, the protagonist learns the pills are fake. Rather than kill, they induce a coma. This serves as a test of an agent's willingness to die for a cause. Having passed, the protagonist was rescued from Ukraine and is recruited to an organization called Tenet. Its purpose is to ensure humanity's survival in the midst of a cold war. A scientist shows him the technology involved in the war, objects that have been modified to move backwards through time. For example, if you place your hand over a modified bullet and feel instinctively that you've dropped it, the bullet will fly into your hand. From the bullet's perspective, the protagonist dropped it. From the protagonist's perspective, the bullet moved in reverse and he caught it. They don't know how to modify objects, they've simply been discovering them. Someone in the future is inverting objects which stream back in time to the present. So, the protagonist's first job is to find out where they're coming from. From the bullet's unique composition, he traces their origin to India's underground weapons trade, led by Sanjay. He meets with Neil, a contact who can help get to Sanjay, a contact who has clearly done his research on the protagonist, as he knows Diet Coke is his non-alcoholic beverage of choice while on the job. With Neil's help, they get into Sanjay's hideout. While Neil watches the guards, the protagonist deals with Sanjay and his wife Priya, who the protagonist learns is the true brains behind the operation. He also learns that Priya is a high-ranking member of Tenet. Priya explains that the bullets were ordinary until she sold them to Andrei Sater, a Russian oligarch now in London. He somehow works with people from the future who inverted the bullets for him. The protagonist meets with a contact in British intelligence who can help get to Sater. The contact shares that two weeks ago, they observed a nuclear-sized detonation at Stock 12, Sater's hometown, a town which has been abandoned since a nuclear accident in the 70s. He also explains that the best way to Sater is through his wife Kat. She is an art appraiser who falsely verified a fraudulent painting as real, a painting which Sater then bought for $9 million. The protagonist can blackmail Kat with this information, threatening to reveal it to Sater unless she arranges a meeting. The protagonist meets with Kat and quickly learns her husband is already aware of the fraudulent painting. He uses it to blackmail her into staying in the relationship. If Kat leaves him, Sater will report her fraud to the police and she'll be arrested, separating her from her son Max. She recalls a time when they vacationed in Vietnam where she tried to love him again, but it ended with them fighting. She left the boat with her son, then returned after Sater called to apologize. As Kat approached the boat, she caught a glimpse of her husband's mistress diving from it, and on the boat, she found Sater was gone. Kat recalls envying that woman and her freedom from Sater. In exchange for a meeting with Sater, the protagonist offers to get rid of the painting and the man's hold over Kat. She reveals the painting is located in a special vault at Oslo Airport. Getting into it requires the protagonist and Neil to pose as clients, crash a plane to activate the emergency protocol, and hold their breaths while security releases noxious gas. They reach a room divided by a glass wall riddled with bullets, leading to a turnstile at one end. Suddenly, men in tactical gear exit both sides of the turnstile. One attacks the protagonist and reveals himself to be inverted. Bullets fly from the glass back into his gun, and the man falls from the ground up to the protagonist's arms. Just like the bullets, the man himself moves backwards through time. The other man attacks Neil. Their struggle takes them down a hallway where Neil manages to remove the assailant's mask. Neil is surprised by what he sees and runs back to the protagonist, who points a gun at his assailant's head. Neil stops him from shooting before the man suddenly flies backwards out of the vault. 
As the guards arrive, they accept mission failure and lie down, pretending to be unconscious from the gas. The protagonist reconvenes with Priya. She explains that what he saw in the vault was a device for inverting material, likely given to Sator from the future. The two men they saw were likely the same man, moving forward through time in his fight with Neil and backward through time in his fight with the protagonist. She explains that Sator has allied with the future in a war against the present. With humanity's fate in the balance, it is imperative the protagonists get close to Sator. Priya shares that Sator failed to acquire the plutonium at the Opera Siege. Instead, Ukrainian security services got it, and Priya knows where and when it will be transferred. The protagonist can bring this info to Sator and pretend to partner with him to steal it. The protagonist lies to Kat, saying the painting was taken care of, but she'll need to hang tight for a bit until they reveal it to Sator. In exchange for his help, she arranges the meeting. But Sator later reveals to Kat the painting is still in his possession. At Sator's request, they meet while boating. But as the protagonist proposes a partnership, Kat attempts to drown her husband. The protagonist quickly rescues the man, helping to land him in Sator's good graces. When a furious Kat confronts the protagonist over his lie about the painting, he tells her that he had to do it. It's not just her life in Sator's hands, but all of theirs. Later, the protagonist spies on Sator as he receives a shipment. He watches Sator collect inverted gold from a capsule. Then, they finalize the terms of their agreement, where the protagonist will lead the heist of the plutonium. Back ashore, the protagonist meets with Neil and theorizes that Sator communicates with the future by burying time capsules that won't be found for centuries. Then, the future fills them with inverted materials that stream backwards through time for Sator to collect in the present. With help from some additional crew, the protagonist and Neil steal the plutonium in a highway heist. Back in the car, the protagonist looks at the material inside the case and notes, I've seen samples of encapsulation in every weapons class. This is not one of them. That's what he's after. As they drive off, an Audi appears, driving backwards toward them. In it, they see Sator wearing a respirator and holding a gun to Kat's head. And another inverted vehicle, a Saab, approaches. Neil warns the protagonist not to hand over the material. Don't give it to him. This is a plutonium. It's worse than that, goddammit. The protagonist quietly removes the contents of the case, then throws the empty container to Sator. While Sator is distracted, he gets rid of the worse than plutonium, throwing it into the Saab. Sator ditches the Audi, leaving Cat dangerously speeding down the road. The protagonist jumps into the car and stops it. With Sator's men approaching, Neil says he'll call in the cavalry. What cavalry? The protagonist shouts, just before he and Kat are captured and brought to Sator's warehouse. Inside, the protagonist sees a room divided by glass and a turnstile on one end, similar to the one in Oslo. On the other side of the glass, an inverted Sator holds a gun to Kat and interrogates the protagonist, while his unintelligible backwards talk is translated by a speaker. If you're not telling the truth, she dies. Sator demands the protagonist confirm the package was left in the BMW. To expedite an answer, Sator catches a bullet which shreds through Kat's torso and back into his gun. The protagonist relents, telling Sator that yes, the package is in the BMW, in the glove box. Then, the inverted Sator slowly walks backwards towards the turnstile, while on the protagonist's side of the glass, present Sator arrives, as do Neil's cavalry, a paramilitary group led by a man named Ives. Present Sator runs into the turnstile, just as his inverted self does the same, and they seem to vanish. In reality, Present Sator has inverted to play out the interrogation in reverse. As though the other side of the glass is on rewind, he watches the cavalry and his earlier self reverse walk out of the warehouse. The protagonist confirms the package's location in the glove box. Sator fires a bullet through Kat's existing wound which, moving in reverse, appears to heal. As he finishes living out the interrogation in reverse, Sator leaves the warehouse to search for the package in the midst of the rewinding heist, where he'll hold a not yet wounded cat captive. In the present, Cat lies bleeding while the protagonist demands answers from Neil, who seems to know more than he's been letting on. Neil admits he's been part of Tenet all along. The paramilitary troops are on their side as well. The protagonist asks how Sator knew their every move. How did he know where to find them as soon as they retrieved the package? Ives explains that Sator executed a temporal pincer. 
half his men moved forward through time through the events of the heist while Sater monitored them. Then, half his men moved backwards through time through the heist with complete knowledge of it. As things calm down, the protagonist reveals he lied to Sator. The package is not in the BMW. They're interrupted by some bad news from the medic. Being shot with an inverted bullet poisoned Cat with radiation. She'll be dead in three hours. Their only hope is to invert Cat and have her live in reverse for about a week. But once she's healed, they'll need a turnstile to get her moving forward again. They can't use this one because a week in the past, it'll still be under Sator's guard. The protagonist and Neil realize they can use the one at Oslo. Their attempted painting heist was a week ago, so during the chaos, they can sneak Cat into the turnstile. They enter Sator's turnstile, inverting themselves and Cat. Before heading to Oslo, the protagonist insists on heading after inverted Sator into the reverse heist to ensure he doesn't harm Cat in the past. Neil assures that Sator will not kill Cat in the past. If he did, she wouldn't be alive now. Whatever's happened, happened. Doubtful, the protagonist goes anyway. First, they hand him a respirator since inverted lungs can't handle regular air and warn him not to make physical contact with himself. That would result in annihilation. That's why they wear protective gear, but he has no time for that now. Outside, he gets into a familiar sob. He finds a discarded orange container on the side of the road and places a Bluetooth microphone in it. When the case flies into the inverted Sator's car, the protagonist listens in and overhears Sator say, Get the other sections of the algorithm to the hypocenter. He was lying. It wasn't in the BMW. The protagonist approaches the scene of his earlier self, throwing Sator the empty container. In his first trip to the heist, the protagonist quietly tossed the container's contents into the sob. Now moving in reverse, the item flies out of the sob and retraces its steps into the hands of the protagonist's earlier self. Thrown by the chaos, the protagonist crashes, and the inverted Sator tells him he saw the handoff of the package, so he now knows where to find it. Then, he throws a lighter to ignite the leaking fuel. The car explodes, but thanks to reversing entropy, freezes instead. The paramilitary team rescues the protagonist and puts him in a shipping container with Neil and Kat. The container was shipped from Oslo, so from their inverted perspective, it's now on its way back. The protagonist confesses that Sator has the package, and Neil finally reveals what it is. It is one of nine parts of the algorithm, a formula made physical so it can't be copied. If all nine parts are brought together and the formula activated, it would reverse entropy not for an object or person, but the entire world, annihilating everything and everyone that's ever lived. Why would the future want to do this? Wouldn't killing their ancestors kill them too? Neil points out that it would appear so, but the future paradoxically believes they can kill their ancestors, yet continue to exist themselves. And there's no way to know if they are right or wrong. The protagonist asks Neil how he became a part of Tenet. Who recruited him? Neil promises to share that once they're done with the mission. At Oslo Airport, the explosion of their plane throws the protagonist into the vault, where he quickly realizes he was the assailant his earlier self nearly killed. He relives the events he already lived through. However, this time he's the man in the mask and tactical gear. After struggling with his earlier self and getting through the turnstile to return to forward time, he bumps into past Neil, who just like before, unmasks him. Outside, the current inverted Neil heads inside, brings Cat through the turnstile, and joins the protagonist in a stolen van, the three of them now moving forward through time. In the car, the protagonist asks why Neil didn't reveal earlier that he knew it was him under the mask. Neil explains that he didn't want to risk altering the protagonist's behavior with knowledge of his future self. The policy is to suppress. Whose policy? How is my friend? The protagonist meets with Priya and learns more. The algorithm was created by a scientist in the future who immediately regretted it. She broke it into nine pieces, hid each piece at nuclear containment facilities in the past, and took her own life. Others in the future want to reassemble it and decided to work with Sator, as he was in the right place at the right time, the fall of the Soviet Union when nuclear plants were most vulnerable. 
Priya also reveals she used the protagonist as a pawn. His role in the mission was to get the package and lose it, just like you did. So, Sator would bring out the other eight pieces to assemble the algorithm, giving Tenet an opportunity to retrieve it. But the protagonist reveals that he knows where Sator will assemble the algorithm, as he overheard it on the Bluetooth transmitter. He'll share the info if Priya assures that when the mission is over and she's cleaning up loose ends, she will not harm Kat, even though at this point Kat knows too much. Priya reluctantly agrees and reveals that Ives has assembled a team to acquire the algorithm. They'll do so with the help of a turnstile given to them from the future. She explains to a shocked protagonist that they have allies in the future too. Tenet was not founded in the past. It will be founded in the future. Before going after the algorithm, there's one problem to take care of. Sator has a kill switch, so if he dies, the algorithm's location will be broadcast. This would allow the future to find it and activate it. In effect, if Sator dies, the world dies too. Cat reveals he is dying of cancer and likely plans to take his own life. If he has to die, he'll want to take the world with him. Where and when would he choose to die? On the boat in Vietnam, they realize, so he can feel Cat's love one more time. On the day when he left the boat, Sator will likely take the place of his past self. On that same day, Kat had gone ashore with her son, so Neil and the protagonist explain that she'll have to replace her past self and keep Sator occupied to ensure he does not kill himself, at least not until the algorithm is secured. That way he'll die thinking the world will follow, but in reality, he will die alone. Later, the protagonist tells Ives what he knows. He overheard Sator say to bring the algorithm to the hypocenter, which refers to ground zero of a nuclear test. He also recalled learning of a detonation at stock 12 on the 14th. That must be the algorithm's location and the explosion is meant to bury it, locking it away to be unburied by the future. Ives, the protagonist, and the rest of the team invert, so they can stream backwards in time toward the 14th. Before re-entering forward time, the protagonist hands Kat a phone, warning that after this is all over, if she ever feels threatened, she should hit talk, state her location, and hang up. Ives goes over the plan. A team will keep Sator's army busy while a small group goes through a tunnel to the hypocenter to achieve their task. Only the protagonist and Ives know that the task is to secure the algorithm. But they keep this a secret, because once the mission is done, anyone with knowledge of it will have to die. They cannot risk the information ever getting out. The protagonist and Ives hope they are the only two who will have to suffer this grim fate. Like Sator, they'll use a temporal pincer. Half the team will move forward through the mission, including the protagonist, and the other half will move backwards through it, including Neil. The knowledge of those who have already moved backwards through the mission was used to inform their plans for the attack. In Vietnam, Kat pretends to be her earlier self and entertains Sator, who calls for their son to come to the boat so he can join them for the sunset. At Stock 12, a chaotic battle begins for the forward team, just as it ends for the reverse team. In the fight, soldiers contend not just with bullets, but also rewinding debris and reassembling buildings. As Ives and the protagonist enter the tunnel, a tripwire sets off a bomb to block their exit with debris. Moving in reverse, Neil finds himself in the past and sees a man setting the tripwire. Knowing the trouble this will cause his friends, Neil sneaks into Sator's turnstile and reverts to forward time. At the hypocenter, Ives and the protagonist find a locked gate and behind it, one of Sator's men preparing the algorithm and a dead body belonging to one of their own men. The protagonist spots a familiar coin on a string hanging from the dead man's backpack. Sator's guard shoots Ives, temporarily knocking him out, and at gunpoint, takes the protagonist's gun. Through a speakerphone, Sator speaks. He tells the protagonist that our generation destroyed the environment, which is what has forced the future to turn the clock back, so they can rewind towards a livable world. He closes the conversation by asking his guard to shoot the protagonist in the head. The man raises his gun, but the dead body before him suddenly rewinds to life and absorbs the gunshot, saving the protagonist's life. The man holds the door open so the protagonist and Ives can get in. Then their savior leaves backwards the way he came. 
Though, from the Savior's perspective, he ran into the hypocenter, picked the lock, and held it open until Ives and the protagonist reverse walked out of it. Finally, he stepped in front of a gun to save the protagonist and was killed by an inverted bullet, leaving his corpse to continue streaming backwards through time. They kill Sator's guard and retrieve the algorithm, but they're trapped behind a closed gate in a sealed tunnel. When Kat sees her son approaching the boat, she decides that she can't let Sator die thinking he won. She pulls a gun and shows the bullet wound Sator inflicted on her earlier, proving she isn't the cat from the past Sator expected, but one from the future he thought he killed. Then she kills him. At the hypocenter, they grab the algorithm but have no way out of the tunnel. Then a rope falls. They grab it and are yanked out of the exploding canyon, pulled by a truck driven by Neil. In Vietnam, Kat dives off the boat, just as her past self arrives to watch her with envy, not realizing that the woman diving off the boat will soon be her. Outside, Ives asks the protagonist how he managed to pick the lock, but he points out that it wasn't him. Then they reconvene with Neil and break the algorithm into thirds. Each will hide their piece of it, then end their lives to ensure the knowledge of its location stays safe, though each will decide when to take their own life. Neil's surprised Ives doesn't kill them on the spot. You're not gonna kill us. If I ever find you, I will. You won't look too hard. However, Neil hands his piece of the algorithm to the protagonist. He's the only one that could have picked the lock in time. He has to invert and go back in to become the man who saved them. As Neil turns, the protagonist spots the coin on a string, the one on the backpack of the dead man and the man who saved him at the opera siege. The protagonist reminds Neil that he never said who recruited him, and Neil reveals it was the protagonist himself. Years ago in Neil's past, the protagonist comes from the future to recruit him. You've known me for years. For me, I think this is the end of a beautiful friendship. But for me, it's just the beginning. Neil tells him that this entire operation is a temporal pincer run by the protagonist. Then he says goodbye and leaves to die. Time passes and Kat returns to London. She notices a suspicious vehicle. In it, Priya and her hitman prepare to assassinate Kat, but the protagonist stops them. Priya wonders how he knew they'd be there, and he plays a recording of Kat reporting the suspicious vehicle, a recording she is only now leaving which the protagonist heard from the future. He kills Priya and watches Kat leave with her son. Thank you for watching this recap. It took a few viewings, lots of notes, and a few spreadsheets for me to fully understand the time travel in this movie. And if there's enough interest, I'd be happy to do a follow-up video going into a little more detail and further explaining the time travel scenes. Let me know if you'd be interested in the comments. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more. With that, thank you for watching, and see you on the next One Take.